celebration yesterday, President Abdel Fattah Sisi honored some of the, the widows, children, and parents of police martyrs during the National Police Day celebration in New Cairo's Police Academy. He also laid a flower wreath on the monument that commemorates the uh, police martyrs. And uh, actually, uh, today is related to an important historic event during which the Egyptian police uh, uh, stood against the British occupation. And uh, we will be learning more about it. And uh, we're joined in the studio right now with uh, his, um, of course, General Hatim Fahmi. And he is the Assistant Director, Information and Relations Department at the Ministry of Interior, who will talk to us more about the police. They also will shed some light on uh, the sacrifices of uh, some of our police officers and soldiers as well. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, General Hatem uh, Fathi, welcome uh, to our breakfast show and we would like to go back uh, days in history and to tell our viewers how did the uh, National Police Day started? Well, the, the National Police Day commemorates uh, the notorious battle of uh, the police against the occupation <coughs> the British at that time uh, when uh, the headquarters in El Ismailia Governorate uh, Eastern uh, Cairo and uh, uh, they uh, showed the whole world their commitment and the desire to support the country against uh, uh, the occupation and uh, they really uh, were respected even by uh, the British uh, generals at that time for their uh, uh, resistance and for defend defending their headquarters uh, their uh, military uh, honor uh, refused to surrender the premises and uh, they were uh, permitted to uh, go on a parade with their arms, fully arms, to go uh, with their honor uh, preserved and uh, many of the martyrs, they were simple police, uh, uh, policemen, uh, they only know uh, the meaning of uh, patriotism and uh, the importance of defending their countries. Uh, we lost about 80 uh, marchers on that battle and all uh, the, the country and the nation, they supported the police and was the start of the revolution uh, of the army in 1952 uh, of July. And uh, from that day, we uh, decided that would be the, the police national day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, the police ever since then, and even before that, throughout the Egyptian history, is known for its patriotism and defending the country, fighting terrorism. So today, as we're commemorating the National Police Day, would you tell us and, and tell our viewers as well some of the examples about the bravery of uh, the Egyptian police? Yes, indeed, the police, and uh, this is for all countries, its, uh, yeah. its responsibility is to defend uh, the internal a front uh, uh, and to uh, defend the back and support the back of the army who are responsible for the frontiers or the borders of the country. And of course it's not only the enemies who are coming uh, from uh, out of the country but we have internal enemies uh, like the criminals and the people who are uh, exploiting uh, simple people who are defenseless and this is where the police comes. Uh, to uh, support the people and defend them. Uh, uh, all the police officers, commissioned officers, and even the simple soldiers, they are coming from the simple families mm -hmm. of uh, all over the country, uh, mostly uh, from uh, villages. Uh, they know the importance of defending uh, their country, defending their uh, soil as well. So uh, you can find the police all over uh, the country uh, performing their duties. Uh, of course, uh, we understand the importance and how critical this moment is in the history of Egypt. Uh, so uh, that's why we are uh, really uh, defending all the values of the Egyptian people and that the Egyptian people decided that he wants to uh, carry on uh, in this historical moment and we are helping the people to go ahead. Uh, all the police officers understand very well that they are not targeted for themselves, but it is the Egyptian people who is targeted. And as the president uh, said before, that uh, the army and the police are defending the country, fighting themselves to protect the people. Okay, uh, General Hatem, um, um, I'll go a little back to the Egyptian movies. Uh, and
and you were mentioning that the police is all over the country. We used to see in these movies um, a police who's called Askari Dorok, who usually uh, roams around uh, at night and of course he was keeping the security. Why now we don't see such uh, an example of uh, uh, this figure now, nowadays? Well, thank you very much for this question. Indeed, we used to have the patrol uh, officer, and uh, it's not only in Egypt, but also in countries like in, uh, in Britain, for instance, who, who's carrying a small uh, stick and going around uh, roaming the streets. Uh, but now the, the situation is different. Now, most of the countries, the advanced countries, they are replacing uh, the individuals with the modern advanced uh, devices and technologies. It's not... Uh, of uh, it's more uh, coping with the new uh, development in the world now there are intelligent cameras that can uh, monitor the streets 24 hours and uh, record everything and even uh, re recognize the plates we have the automatic number plates recognition system who can automatically recognize the stolen cars the the, the wanted cars and directly send it to the operation rooms and uh, now the, the the police in Egypt of course this is some kind of expensive so we are trying to gradually acquire such technology now the Egyptian police and the Minister of Interior decided to acquire all the, the technology now we have modern cameras we have modern systems uh, taking advantage of the huge revolution of the internet and the, the communication and all aspects uh, apply that uh, the identification of the faces, the identification of uh, the fingerprints and that was very clear in the, the incident of uh, uh, the, the, the church uh, when we identified uh, the criminal only in, in six hours uh, thanks to the new uh, advanced labs of the DNA. Mm -hmm. So uh, combining the people with the technology and the machines. This is how we are now managing. We are keeping uh, the police around, of course, uh, when needed, especially in the crowded areas and in the uh, touristic areas for needed. But we also, if we you don't see a police uh, man in the street, that doesn't mean that that street is not monitored by the police as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that actually uh, the police officers, the soldiers, every single um, rank in the police, uh, they are having special training and that there are extra training take, being undertaken. Would you tell us please about uh, these training sessions and uh, what do they involve? Yes, different categories of police. Uh, we have uh, the commanders or the police officers. They have the police academy, which is uh, notorious. Uh, not only on the Middle East and Africa, but around the world, one of mm -hmm. uh, the most advanced uh, police uh, mm -hmm. colleges. And uh, we have a very advanced uh, training. We all the time update our programs and the, the training courses, uh, the new uh, uh, changes in the world and the crime, new phenomena. We, uh, we study it and we train the officers on how to confront it. They also have a very uh, advanced uh, physical uh, training f to prepare them to uh, perform their duties. Uh, we have also training for the non-commissioned officers who are maintaining uh, the, the work on the, on the streets uh, to assist the officers. You can find them in the police stations. Also we have training for uh, the soldiers who join the force to uh, preserve uh, security on the central security and uh, some of uh, the, the, the uh, police areas, remote areas out of Cairo. Yes. Um, sir, um, you know, there, as you mentioned, there are notorious uh, areas or vicious areas uh, for drug dealers and crime, uh, crimes that happen. Some areas in Egypt, of course, in ruler places. So is the police is able to enter these uh, uh, places uh, which has a vicious and uh, notorious names or they deal from the outside? Well, it's not a matter of entering the places because the police can enter every place. It's a matter of uh, how effective uh, the police when they go there to uh, prevent the crimes and to uh, arrest uh, the, the criminals uh, if they commit a crime and forward the case to uh, <coughs> the courts. Mm -hmm. So there is no place that the police cannot uh, enter. Uh, yet, uh, of course, the police have some difficulties when uh, it comes to performing their duty. We have 
the marginal areas and the crowded areas. I think now uh, the government understands the situation and they are working on uh, trying to uh, shift the people from the crowded areas and the poor areas to more, uh, we can say, um, civilized housing. Mm -hmm. And that helped the police uh, too much to control uh, over the crime. Uh, the people themselves in those areas still kind people, of course, but uh, yeah. some of the little cri criminals, like little number of the criminals, they dominate those uh, poor people. So the police is there to uh, defend and protect uh, the poor people. And it is also a, a problem of economic aspects. Uh, some of the people who are jobless and uh, they found, find nothing to do and then try to trend to some criminal activities. All that combined to make uh, some kind of challenge to the police, but the police is working all the time uh, to address uh, that problem, and along with the government and the, the NGOs who are also interested of improving the standard of living of such areas. Mm -hmm. General, yesterday, uh, President Hamdel Fattah al as part of the celebration, he gave a wonderful speech. Um, and actually honoring the families of uh, the martyrs, was, it was quite emotional. And which parts of the speech you feel that they are significant and you'd like to highlight it to our viewers today? Well, uh, fortunately, uh, every year the president uh, is very much keen to visit uh, the, the police minister of interior uh, to show his uh, uh, assistance to us and his support <coughs> to uh, the police force. And as usual, uh, he is very open and frank when he's uh, speaking uh, to uh, or addressing uh, the people. Uh, we understand that he's not only addressing the, the police or the audience and the whole party is also addressing the whole nation. Mm -hmm. uh, the president have given uh, very uh, much attendance to the martyrs' families and he said that uh, we can never compensate their sacrifice but we are trying to uh, solidate and show our uh, uh, kind of interest and in their how they live afterwards and that we are all the time with them and we thank them for uh, the sacrifice and we show the people that uh, there are others who are defending you and losing their uh, lives for you and he said that I've said before that the army and the police will take the risk and uh, defend the people sacrifice themselves uh, and that the, the Egyptian people who are the real target uh, in the first place and uh, the president uh, uh, told us about some statistics about the huge amounts of explosives and arms that has been seized by the army and police and he said that maybe one-tenth of uh, what we found he said uh, about 400 million <coughs> pounds uh, uh, of uh, our confiscations and he said many parts are uh, pushing uh, towards a, a point of conflict in Egypt but of course we will hinder that of happening. Uh, also, uh, the president have given us advices on how to treat the people. He uh, made it uh, uh, very sure that uh, the respecting the standards of human rights and the good treatment of the people is on the top priorities of his instructions uh, to the police. Uh, he even uh, spent more time than the scheduled time with, with the police because he was very interested to uh, welcome everyone from the families of the martyrs, taking photos with them and try to uh, share uh, those moments uh, of highly emotional uh, feelings with them. We also had that uh, uh, message from one of the mothers uh, that was uh, really influential when she uh, spoke uh, in front of, of all of us and said she lost her, her only uh, son uh, on the police and uh, that uh, he only served three uh, years in Sinai and tried to renew his period once more. So it was a really emotional uh, uh, event as usual and we we're very honored uh, that the president himself uh, came to us and all the government of course. Yes. Sir.
mentioning uh, Sinai, of course, we have martyrs every now and then uh, from police and, of course, from the army in uh, Sinai. People lose their life to depend to do defend uh, their countries. But some of, some of the analysts are saying that uh, one of the problems in uh, Sinai, for example, is the fixed checkpoints and that the terrorists know every details about these checkpoints. So why these checkpoints are not movable? Why they do not, why they do not change every now and then? We have applied uh, all tactics. We have the station. Uh, it's not a kind of checkpoint, but it's kind of uh, <coughs> um, a stronghold a point of there. It has to be there. Uh, and that's why they are targeting those. They want us to remove it. But all the time, we have to keep it. Those are strategic points to uh, but they will keep attacking the control. Them. Yes, they are keeping attacking us, and we're keeping defending and keeping losing lives, but we will not uh, pull out from there. This is the main point, and this is what the president said by uh, uh, spending all uh, those uh, amounts of money and pushing all those explosives. They want you to pull out. We will not pull out. We'll mm -hmm. be there, but we are all the time improving our uh, tactics. We are uh, uh, taking advantage of the new technologies. We are uh, trying to apply uh, uh, more advanced methods. We have also uh, patrol uh, that are moving, but those could be targeted as well. So we are improving our uh, plans. Uh, and I think that the situation is improving. It's not uh, that uh, bad uh, as you think because we have maybe a clip here on uh, police officers from uh, North Sinai and they mm -hmm. said uh, that uh, they are there, they're sticking to uh, their duties. Uh, also, uh, the problem in uh, North Sinai is in a limited area. It's not as uh, shown on the newspapers or in the media. It's very limited areas, very small area, what, eastern of uh, El Arish, mm -hmm. and uh, the one adjacent to the borders with uh, Gaza. And uh, I think that it's under control till now. So the problem is only there. And uh, we hope that we will manage to finish that problem uh, in the future. In, in, indeed, hopefully we will, with the bravery of our soldiers and the army and the police, we will be able to counter uh, any type of threat in that area. I understand also that actually our police force, they are not only, um, especially the commanders, uh, they are not only combating terrorism in, within Egypt, but I understand that they, that they are ranked, especially in fighting terrorism, one of the best uh, worldwide and that even they, some of them are given certain courses and they are employed as part of the United Nations Peace Force. Yes. Uh, it, so would you tell us more about our involvement also abroad in fighting terrorism abroad? Yes, since uh, 1989 we uh, started our participation <coughs> as police uh, uh, officers of police force uh, in the United uh, Nations uh, peacekeeping missions. Mm -hmm. We started with Namibia in uh, 89 and then we uh, went other places mm -hmm. and uh, the police force abroad is very much desired they ask us all the time to increase the number of uh, our police officers there but of course to maintain our duties here mm -hmm. we keep it on a certain uh, limit uh, the police officers are performing abroad in a very uh, uh, in a very commended way indeed and they're uh, also the United Nations uh, they see uh, that we are using the modern applications uh, mm -hmm. like any force in the world mm -hmm. and the most important of that all is the commitment of the personnel of the police to their duties uh, it's not only to know the tactics or to know how to uh, operate uh, certain machinery but it's the, the personal uh, uh, commitment of the police as well uh, as for uh, participating on the anti-terrorism activities, this is for the national security through uh, mm -hmm. uh, international cooperation with other forces mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the world. We have a good international cooperation uh, with uh, many countries uh, in the United States and in Europe. Uh, uh, we share information. Uh, we also uh, uh, receive information that could be uh, helpful for the police uh, to intervene to support uh, many of the terrorist actions. Yeah. Sir, uh, moving back to the terrorist uh, attacks that happens every now and then, 
um, the terrorists used very advanced uh, weapons and uh, cars and, of course, the, the huge amount of explosives. So how these people are funded? Where they get the money? Well, it's, uh, the whole world is witnessing, uh, indeed, uh, such attacks. And now uh, all the world uh, came to understand that no country is away from facing terrorism and there must be a unified stand for the world and uh, an international political desire to uh, confront terrorism and that uh, terrorism should not be used by countries mm -hmm. as uh, uh, a pressing card mm -hmm. on other countries and that one day you will uh, suffer from the terror terrorism yourself and we said we see that in Europe yeah, and, and the in, attacks in that happen and, there. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, of course, uh, they are taking advantage of science <coughs> and the new technology. It's not uh, mm -hmm. the matter of huge amount of explosives. Now it's became a small amount of explosive, but it can generate the same uh, effect of the huge amount. We see uh, new uh, materials like the C4 and the Semtex mm -hmm. that uh, new. We all, we, all the time we have the traditional mm -hmm. like the TNT and the galaganite. But now we have more uh, advanced uh, materials uh, used in tourism. But the police in Egypt, uh, they all the time they study the new trends. The, we have a very uh, advanced uh, criminal laboratories that can detect uh, such uh, materials. And we are developing our tactics uh, all the time. And many countries now came to cooperate with Egypt on that. We have now long experience on uh, confronting uh, terrorism. So as I told you before, I think the situation is uh, uh, improving in Egypt. If we go back three years and check the statistics, uh, it will be uh, on our uh, good sake now that we have improved. Yes. We'd like uh, to show some uh, and screen some parts uh, the our martyrs so that the people would understand, so we, we will be showing some footage about them so that they understand the sacrifices that they've made. But before we do that, we'd like you to explain and elaborate more on the major sacrifice that these families have made and that these, their police officers and soldiers have done. So that, and we're right now showing some of uh, the festivities as well. As, so would you please comment on that? Everyone, I think, can realize uh, easily uh, how does it cost to uh, lose uh, a beloved one and uh, not only a beloved one but uh, someone who is taking care of his family a uh, young uh, wife and little children and after mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they could be left behind in this uh, haste uh, movement of the life we mm -hmm. see it in the modern countries and the crowded, uh, crowded cities like uh, Cairo that's why the Minister of Interior is embracing these families and we are uh, all the time, it's not a matter of financially compensating them because we cannot do so. Nothing uh, equals the, the life of yes, uh, their uh, father yes. Yes. or husband. But all the time we are trying to tell them that we are there. We share uh, the national uh, events uh, like Ramadan, like uh, the feast. Uh, we all the time uh, communicating with them. We have groups on the, the, the social media with them. They are all the time can mm -hmm. come to the Minister of Interior asking for anything. Mm -hmm. We keep uh, taking care of the children mm -hmm. and their health, their uh, care and the hospitals uh, along with their uh, uh, education uh, until they go to the universities and even to the girls to uh, get married and all the time as they lost their father or uh, their son, we keep all the time uh, taking care of them. And we are receiving uh, very much moral uh, support from them when we uh, listen to the mothers and to the fathers who say, who say that uh, they are very much willing to send their next child to the son to defend Egypt. Uh, this uh, really is inspiring and uh, give us uh, more uh, courage to go ahead. Uh, that's why all the time they are on the most, on the top priorities of the Minister of Interior. Yes. Sir, um, when you lose some of your friends or someone you know and, um, and he becomes a martyr, how do you feel? Do you feel that your job is very hard, that's enough, or you feel that you want to continue more? 
Well, uh, I've just returned from a funeral of a friend last night. Uh, he died uh, on one of uh, performing his duties. We feel sorrow, of course, for the loss uh, of a friend who used to be with us and uh, without an alarm, you mm. lose him. It's not out of illness or something because uh, aged people or ill people, they are warning us uh, before they yeah. depart. But suddenly, you know that uh, you lost someone. Uh, but we never refrain from uh, continuing our duties. Uh, there has been uh, one of my colleagues, I used to uh, advise him to calm down when he's uh, performing his duties, but he's very uh, enthusiastic and very uh, brave and said, if we don't do that, who will do it? Mm -hmm. So he was doing his part of the job. He was, uh, he was protecting his, even he, what he thinks is this tiny piece of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my job, I will do it. And when we lose him, another uh, person replaces him the next, the very next day. And we have many examples of that. Uh, we just remove the plot from the ground and the other people take, uh, take the new uh, uh, position. And we cop keep on because if we pull out or withdraw from the streets, our people and families, the ordinary people, they have to face the problems themselves. So uh, we just continue and go ahead and we know if even we lost our lives, others will come and replace us. Mm -hmm. And this is a very strong message, uh, not only to the terrorists, but to all the criminals. The police will never withdraw or uh, refrain from uh, performing their duties. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally agree with you, sir, because always when I see police officers on the road, I feel secure and yes. safe. And, and the, we always look around for them if we're in trouble or if there is any problem. And, and indeed, uh, I feel that the, they are doing a wonderful, you're doing a wonderful job with that. Now, what, what, that needs a lot of moral support. And I understand that there is a special department for moral support within the ministry. So would you tell us more about it? Yes, we have recently inaugurated uh, a department. Uh, that job was there all the time, but it was a small department. Now we have inaugurated a larger department to take care of the internal morale of uh, the police force, uh, trying to uh, help them uh, to uh, come over the obstacles, come over the, the, the bad feelings uh, about how uh, severe their work, the, the longed hours of working and uh, the, the harsh environment uh, that uh, they are working uh, in. Uh, so that we are trying all the time to uh, speak to them. Uh, as I was coming uh, to the building now, I shake hands with all the police force down uh, protecting the building. And I uh, told them how important the job is. And uh, today is a holiday, but they are there leaving their families and they are st standing in the streets. And I really uh, was very pleased of the morale and they said they are doing their job. They are very much aware uh, that uh, they are here for the people to uh, practice their daily life. And uh, this is one thing that is very important. Uh, we are not fully satisfied as a ministry of what we are doing. We think we should do more. But I think that uh, if we help the country to go ahead and to improve, the standard of living for all, I think it will reflect also on the police. Oh, Sir, uh, yeah. now we're going to watch uh, a movie from the Ministry of Interior about the efforts exerted by uh, police officers in order to secure uh, the community, so please stay tuned. Well, uh, that was really quite an emotional uh, documentary. It's in it we, we have seen together how the police officers have vowed to protect the Egyptian land, they, they vow to the people and to the president uh, that they will always stand and they will keep on defending every inch of the country, and especially in North Sinai, and uh, that uh, whatever happens, Egypt will be first and above all. And, and that's important, and, and that's very patriotic of them to, to hear them, uh, and to know that, that many of them have lost their life to uh, that commitment that we have just seen uh, in that documentary. It is a real truth. And today we are celebrating that on uh, the 
65th anniversary of uh, the National Police Day and we're continuing our interview with General Hatim Fathi, Assistant Director, Information and Relations Department. And now, uh, General, tell us more about this vow. Tell us more about what's going on in New Sinai and the bravery of our police officers and soldiers there. Well, that message uh, shows us uh, that the police is there on the ground, the, the building of uh, uh, the North Sinai police headquarters or yes. in the back of the police officers. Now we have, as a Minister of Interior, a problem uh, with North Sinai that we have a long list of volunteers. They are wishing to go and share uh, their, mm -hmm. uh, their colleagues uh, in mm -hmm. their uh, performance of the duties in North Sinai. Mm -hmm. and that the police officers and soldiers working in North Sinai, they extend their periods there, their services, as uh, the mother of uh, the, the, the martyr police officer yesterday said that he, mm -hmm. he was scheduled to serve three years, but he extended for one extra year because they feel that this is not a job, this is a duty, and that they are keeping uh, the enemies of the Egyptian people from penetrating mm -hmm. to inland, they want to come to inland, mm -hmm. to, to, to Egypt, to spread chaos, like what they did in other countries. Mm -hmm. But they are holding them there, and they are uh, defending the country uh, and uh, allowing uh, the, 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 the normal life of the Egyptians to go on, like we have seen in the documentary mm -hmm. film when we showed uh, the normal activities of the people monitored and protected uh, by the police. So uh, we don't have a problem of morale in North Sinai. They, they are very uh, high. Yeah, yeah, they were strong. They yes, were saying yes, it and, and they were really much. strong. That is not fabricated. This is a real message from North mm -hmm. Sinai. We also we can uh, see the will in the way the, the officers spoke. The will, the courage, and the uh, bravery, they indeed. are very much resolved to go ahead and mm. they are even more, they are extending yes. their services yes. there. And we are seeing some of the statistics of, uh, of I think these are the martyrs? Uh, no, this is or uh, are the activities the of or the, the public activities. security, on yes. the, 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 the arrests and yes. the, 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 the seizure of uh, drugs. As we have seen, that so, uh, yes. it became very uh, obvious that the Egyptian youth and the Egyptian people yes. are targeted so, by so drugs. So these are the successful missions? That, yes, that uh, done. Uh, yes, those on, uh, along uh, 2016 and mm -hmm. all the activities of the police as well. We can see the, the, see the water police, they are working on uh, protecting uh, the water channels and the, the river Nile. Uh, this is my department, myself. We are working on uh, the barters, the morals, uh, the media production. Uh, we have seen also the civil status, they, they developed mm -hmm. uh, uh, their services uh, exerted to uh, uh, the Egyptians uh, by uh, inaugurating new uh, departments and mm -hmm. also they have uh, signed a contract with uh, the, the Egyptian post mm -hmm. uh, to add about 500 uh, places mm -hmm. uh, to uh, help the people uh, who can want to uh, obtain uh, IDs or uh, birth uh, certificates etc mm -hmm. uh, to go directly to the post office and finish it from there uh, rather yes. than going to the main headquarters and uh, st stand on uh, long queues or something like that. Yes. So all the time we are trying to facilitate uh, the services extended to the Egyptians. Yes. Uh, sir, speaking about uh, traffic and of course you said you are trying to facilitate the procedures of uh, the license and uh, the IDs and so and so. Um, now I can see in, in many uh, uh, main squares in Egypt you have uh, put the uh, monitoring cameras uh, so what's the importance of these cameras at first? And second, what are the problems uh, in the traffic and how it could be solved? Well, first of all, we can see the, the problem on, on the traffic in many aspects. Uh, the crowded cities, especially Cairo and the adjacent um, annexes mm -hmm. of Cairo, like Al Qalyubiyya, like mm -hmm. Giza, now it became a huge unified block uh, of course, uh, many reasons uh, uh, participated in that, but we, now the situation on the ground that we have uh, overcrowded uh, a number of cars uh, around in Cairo and the same streets uh, as before. Uh, we see also the, the bad practice from some of uh, the drivers 
uh, they are not committed to uh, the ethics of driving rather than the, the traffic law, but the ethics of the driving. So uh, uh, the man uh, now is preparing uh, a new uh, bill of uh, traffic. We'll send it to the parliament for further uh, discussion. If that uh, will be uh, approved by the parliament, so we'll issue a new law for the traffic that will cope with uh, the new development, uh, the new uh, extension of the roads. Now, in the highways, uh, uh, the government have a very ambitious plan of extending the high roads around in Egypt and that will put a more burden on the shoulders of the traffic to cover uh, all those new roads. Uh, one important development as well is uh, uh, applying the new technology to monitor the roads rather than the physical uh, uh, existence of uh, the police personnel themselves. So, so uh, I, I wish we had a, a whole episode speaking about traffic and problems and how it could uh, be solved, but actually we ran out of time. General Hatem uh, Fathi, the uh, head of the international relations sectors at the Ministry of Interior, thank you very much for joining us and welcome once again to Prime Minister. Thank you very much and I'd like to congratulate all the Egyptians for this National Day and I would like to say uh, this is a wonderful day. Please go ahead and go uh, on the streets and of the empty roads and uh, the police is there all the time to protect you. Again, uh, General Hatim Fathi, Assistant Director, Information and Relations Department at the Ministry of Interior. Thank you very much for this interview. And of course, happy uh, Police Day, not just to you, but to all of us Egyptians, because the police, they are the Egyptians and they are our protectors. They are our husbands, brothers and fathers as well. And uh, by this, we come to the end of this episode of Breakfast Show. I'd like to thank you very much. Much, Tina, thank, thank you, you Russia. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much. And uh, by this, we wrap uh, today's episode. But make sure to follow us tomorrow. And uh, of course, it will be with a new team. I'm part of that team for tomorrow. So hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow again on Breakfast Show. And stay tuned for more coming up on Nile TV International. Have a good day.